I'm not who I think I am. I'm not who you think I am. I am who I think that you think I am. Welcome, champions, to another exciting episode of Champion Reads, where we go into best-selling books by best-selling authors and talk about the principles and the wisdom and the experience that they have and share with us. My name is William Blake, and I have this wonderful opportunity to be the host for you today. As we usually have other people on here joining us, you know, schedules happen, life occurs. And it's all right, but we still provide the value that you need. So let's jump into this book. The book that we are going over today is The Magic of Thinking Big. If you're on video right now, you, you, can, you can be able to see it. But The Magic of Thinking Big by David Schwartz. What an amazing book. And I'll tell you this. When I, when I heard about this book and this book was suggested, I didn't have any feelings about what was going on there wasn't a negative or a positive thing about it however as i've started reading it it's jumped to my top 10 books now some might be like well willie that's that might not be anything over the last five years i've read over 300 self-help books and out of those 300 i'm putting this book as one of the top 10 which should indicate how powerful this book is because this book can sit amongst other authors like Tony Robbins, like James Clear with Atomic Habits, with Napoleon Hill in his books, with Stephen R. Covey. So many great authors. This book, in my opinion, right? This is just my opinion, can sit at the top with it. Today, we're going to jump into two different principles. The first one is. You, you are what you think you are. And then the second one is to manage your environment because your environment is who you're going to become. So let's jump straight into you are who you think you are. There's this quote that's been my one of my favorite quotes that has to do with this topic. It quotes, I'm not who I think I am. I'm not who you think I am. I am who I think that you think I am. Let that settle for a second. And then for those who don't have years of experience saying that and quoting it, because it took me a while to understand what I just said. Basically what I said was that I th think and I act in the manner that I think other people are thinking about me. So if I go out, here's some examples. If I go out into New York City, walking down Times Square, and I think that everyone there, <coughs> excuse me, everyone there thinks of me as a burden. Well, then I'm going to walk and I'm going to act in the way of not being a burden to someone else. So my head might not be down. I might have earbuds in. I might take the, the path that has the least people in it. I might not stand in lines or, or do anything that would inconvenience other people. We are acting in the way that we think that the other people are thinking about us. When in reality, in that situation, like in New York City, everyone has their own lives. Everyone's doing their own thing. Ain't nobody thinking about you. Even it doesn't even matter where you are. You can be in like the countryside of northern Idaho. Ain't nobody thinking about you. So another example could be as as you're going to a networking event 
and you th- walk into the room and you think you're just all high and mighty, full of energy, ready to give value to people. Well, the way you're going to act is the way of giving value to people. So when you go to the networking event, you're going to talk to a bunch of people in there. You're going to ask them about what they do. You're going to ask them how you can help them. And at, and people are going to think that you are a very social and a master communicator, as well as someone who gives value to a lot of people. But if you go on that same thing and think kind of like, you know, New York City, that you're a burden, you might sit in the corner, you might not talk to anybody. And if you do talk to someone, you're going to try to pick topics that either they're attracted to or keep the conversation short, which in turn creates the problem of people think that you're not social, that you're not really out to do anything, that why the heck are you at the networking event? So that's the cool thing about you. You are who you think you are. We act in the manner of the way that we think. So if we act in the manner of the way that we think, then we just think differently and we will act differently. Let me say that again. As we think differently, we will act differently. I I remember when I was, uh, I think it was a classroom. I was in a classroom. And I sat there. There was an English classroom. And me with dyslexia always had the hardest time with anything that had to do with English. But as I sat there, I had this, I'm going to call it limiting belief because, you know, that's what it was. But this belief of I'm not a good writer simply because I grew up as a dyslexic. For those who don't know what a dyslexic is, dyslexics struggle usually in four different areas, reading, writing, speaking, and spelling. And just like any mental ability or disability, it's on a spectrum. Like some might struggle really like a lot with speaking. Others may struggle, you know, just have a little bit of struggle with writing. For me, I thought I thought of myself as just a, a bad writer. It took me way too long to write. And after I wrote, I didn't know if I was good at any grammar, punctuation, all that stuff that you need to ace English class. Semester went, semester went by. <coughs> Goodness, got a frog in my throat. Semester went by, and the teacher had us do reports. We did the reports, and then they were randomly, anonymously assigned to other people for us to grade. I grew, I not grade to edit, I guess you could say, to peer review. There we go. That's the word. And then for the grade, you'd have to give a presentation in class for about the paper. And I remember going through it and I felt some of my comments were a little harsh. So I tried to be a little nice about them. And then I, I did so much red ink to the paper. I felt like, man, am I just going crazy? Am I just this bad at grammar where I'm like, I don't know if this is it or not? And so I had that little, I had, I had a little self doubt about what was going on. Days of the presentations come on. It was like three separate days. So on the I think on the first day it was my turn to give it. So I gave mine. And over the next couple of days, I didn't think any more about what was going on. Last presenter came up, and he said. And I still remember this. He said, I don't know who graded my paper and peer reviewed it, but I just want to say that was one of the best peer reviews I've ever had. And he went on to just complimenting and complimenting this anonymous person who graded it because it helped his paper so much and was so great in going in a direction that just made his made it great. And I sat there being like, wow, that that. That's a lot of praise. I wonder who graded his paper. As he gave the presentation, I realized that was the paper I graded. And how cool was that? To be able to sit there thinking, man, I I was the one that graded that paper. And that breakthrough of a limitation hit me. And I'm like, well, now my belief is I'm a good writer. And since then, I've written and co-authored in several best-selling books. It's so funny that we think 
that we uh, I have to look at the book. I keep forgetting the language of it. Uh, you are what you think you are. You act in the way of how you think. It's, when you think about what's going on in your life, think about how are you thinking? Are you thinking in a positive manner? Are you thinking that you want to go out and crush the world to attack your goals? Or are you thinking that your spouse or kids are an issue? That working a nine to five or working 40 plus hours a week, that that's hindering you from getting the life that you want. Whatever it may be, you are what you think you are. So it's a great exercise to get into as you're you're going forward because there's power in thinking. Obviously, we wouldn't cover this topic if there isn't. There's power in that thinking. So as we go forward, let's think a little better, think a little bit more clearer. And as we do so, our actions are going to change. Now, something that might come up in your mind is, hey, Willie, what the heck? Are you? Like, that's great. That sounds like a great principle, but how do I apply it to my life? Well, in those short examples that I gave you, that would be one way. Another way is with you are who you think that you are. Start doing visualization. Start doing more things with thinking better thoughts. Like we have control over our thoughts. Obviously, we have habits. Obviously, we have unconscious thoughts. But those were put there by action, by uh, consistent thoughts that happened in the past. So even though that might be a 15-year habit, it's still only a habit, which means that we can change our mind to be able to go to where we want it to go. It's like my grateful three method. To change your attitude, change your gratitude. I always say every time you have a negative thought, say three things you're grateful for. Because right now, you're in an abundance of negativity. And you want to be in an abundance of positivity. So you got to do more positive to beat out the negative. That's such a crucial principle. You got to do more of what you want and less of what you don't want. So that your brain gets triggered in saying, oh, this is a new thing that we're creating a divot in our mind for so that it can start the pathway to get to where it wants to go. And if you want to be a positive person, if you want to be a high achiever, if you want to be an entrepreneur, if you want to be a writer, author, singer, actor, whatever it may be, something that's bigger than yourself. then what you need to do is to start thinking that way. Just start. Think about, here's some questions for you. What would it be like if I had my dream? Or even simpler, what is my dream? What are some things that I would like to have in my life? Who are the people I want to surround myself with? These are just simple questions to start broadening your mind. And as you broaden your mind, you'll start to realize that you are broadening your actions. And they'll continue to follow as you continue to expand your thoughts. Jump into the second principle, your environment. Manage your environment. Let me let me jump to the chapter because I want to read a, a, a couple of pair, pair. I say paragraphs, but they're more like sentences because the paragraph is like one or two sentences. I want to read a couple of these sentences as we talk about it because it's manage your environment and go first class. How cool would it be for you have who have flown before? How cool would it be to go first class? To be in the plane, to have room around you, to be able to spread out, maybe lay back a little bit, to, to get, you know, the high-end snacks, be the first ones to get snacks, to just be comfortable while you fly in a plane. I know I've flown commercial so many times, and I'll tell you what, commercial, economy, I can't remember what the term is, but where most people sit. And I'll tell you, when I when I sit next to my family, it's a little bit more comfortable because I'm okay like nudging them with my elbow. But when you sit by strangers, it's one of the most awkward things in the world. Being like, hey, our flight's like four hours. Is it all right if I just like touch you with my elbow the whole time? It's It's the weirdest thing. So how would it be like if you were in that first class? Right. Think the you you are what you think you are. Think about it and you'll get there. But let's jump to the environment that we have because our environment is crucial in creating the person who we are going to be. 
right? If you're if you're in a good environment where people are um, good, like we'll just we'll stick with good, then you're gonna turn out in that definition of good. But if you're in an environment where there might be a lot of gun shootings and drugs and alcohol and such, that is going to affect who you're going to become. So if someone who you're going to become or want to become isn't someone who drinks, isn't someone who smokes or do, does drugs or whatever it may be, then either you need to get out of the environment or you got to have one of the strongest wills in the entire world to not do what other people are telling you to do. So it's just a lot easier to change your environment. But bef- but you, even after all that said, let me let me read a few of these sentences to you uh, of what David Schwartz says. So this is talking about managing your environment and it's talking about mastering the mind. It says, market well. Environment shapes us, makes us think the way we do. Try to name just one behavior or one mannerism you have had that you did not pick up from other people. Relatively minor things, like the way we walk, cough, hold a cup, our preferences for music, literature, entertainment, clothing, all stem in very large part from environment. And I can tell you that's absolutely true. When I first got married, in my so in my teenage years, I loved just pop rock music. And I still do. I love pop rock. It's one of my top favorite. That's what I would listen to as a teenager all the time. In Utah, the radio station 97.9, like that's the station that a lot of my peers would, would listen to. That's the station we, we'd head up. After I got married, my wife was living mostly in Idaho, her life. And in Idaho, they like country music. And so she fell in love with country. I hated country. <laughs> the only country song I liked was Life is a Highway. And I don't even know how country that song is. But after we got married, I started getting to be more more uh, exposed to country music. And every time it came on, I'd look out the window. and Or if I'm driving, I'd just focus on driving because I just didn't really like country music. Six years later, I'm sitting here and being exposed to so much country music, I started to like it a little more. And there are some songs that I have memorized, I guess would be the right word that I have memorized some songs that I like others. I still don't, but like that constant exposure in that environment has moved me towards liking country music. When before it was like, absolutely no life is a highway. That's it. And I don't even know how country that is. So it is super important. Just that exposure in that environment over months, over years changes you into that consistent thing. Let me re- read a little bit more on. More important, the size of your thinking, your goals, your attitudes, your very personality is formed by your environment. So it's that exact same thing. It's not just like music. It's not just simple habits, but it's also our thinking habits. And if you are what you think you are, then by golly, the size of your thinking, your goals, and your attitudes, and your very personality is formed by your environment, then... It's got to be important, right? It just makes sense for it to be important. Let me let me jump to a, to one last thing. Prolonged association with negative people makes us think negatively. Close contact with petty individuals develops petty habits in us. On the bright side, companionship with people with big ideas raises the level of our thinking. Close contact with ambitious people gives us ambition. Experts agree that the person you are today, your personality, ambitions, present status in life, are largely the results of your psychological environment. And experts agree also that the person who you will be 1, 5, 10, 20 years from now depends almost entirely on your future environment. You will change over the months and years. This we know. But how you change will depend on your future environment the mind food you feed yourself. Boom. Mic drop from David Schwartz. It's so important that we we understand the principle of our environment. There's that quote out there that we are the resemblance of the five closest people that we interact with. 
think about who your five closest people are. Because I can tell you that if I were to look at those five people and spend a little time with them, that they would directly reflect who you are as an individual. Now, this isn't a depressing fact. It's an encouraging one. Because if we are able to be affected by our environment, then all we got to do is use our power of choice to change our environment, to get around more people. Because I can tell you, if you want to be a billionaire, get in a room with a bunch of billionaires. And sooner or later, you will become one. It's just the magnetic gravity of the whole thing. The attractiveness of the whole thing. You start thinking like them. You start talking like them. You start working like them. And then all of a sudden, you get what they have. Which is weird, right? If you follow the path that other people are taking, you're going to get the results that they have. Crazy. So manage your environment. If there are people in your life that you find difficult, that you find that aren't what you want in your life, then I'll tell you this. You might need to start spending a lot of time with them. You might need to distance yourself a little bit. That's not enough. You also need to start taking in more people that have more of what you have. And there's two ways you can go about doing this. And I've had success in both. That's why I'm sharing this, right? We don't want to share our just advice that we get in a book. Woohoo, go David Schwartz. But we want to share life experiences. We want to share what's working for us and then hopefully work for other people. These two things have worked for me. The first one is to get around people in person. These are like going to networking events. These are going, if you're like you're in school, this is sitting in the front row with the people who are nerds or geeks, when in reality, they're just ambitious and going places. This might simply be with the coworkers you hang out with, finding out those individuals who are making the most in the company. Or if you're working in sales, figuring out the one who makes the most sales, hanging out with them rather than gossiping at the water cooler. Right? It's about changing your environment, changing uh, uh, the people you need to go. So the first one is, is getting around more and more people. One more example before I jump to the second one is when I first started out doing this, that's what I did. When I first started out going to wanting to be a best-selling author, to wanting to be an international speaker and a coach, I started surrounding my people, my people, started surrounding myself with more people who were awesome individuals. So what did I do? I was in school at the time about like a two and a half, year and a half, two years into it. And I started sitting in the front row of classrooms. And I started to, at the first day of school, when you get in there and you're like looking like, who should I sit by and everything? I stopped looking for, oh, who would be a cool friend to... Who looks like and acts like they're going places in life? The ones who care about the work in the class and care about their grades. Because those are the ones who are most likely going to get the A's. Instead of sitting in the back. Where, you know, too many distractions can happen. And then I moved into going to networking and mastermind events. I remember going to my first mastermind. I felt so overwhelmed and undervalued in there. Not from other people. That was just the way I was thinking, <laughs> right? You, you think you think the way that you think you are. As I went in, they just seemed to be a whole bunch of high-level individuals who had their own businesses, who were making millions of dollars. But I spent three hours in there with the mastermind and everything, and I walked out with several ideas. Excuse me, that I can do to move forward with what I was doing. And that was simply from three hours of spending just time around those people. And as I've continued to spend time around them, I've now started my own business. I'm now a best-selling author and I'm speaking on stages. Like things are happening, but I had to change my environment first, change who I was surrounding myself with. And that in turn helps you get stronger and stronger and stronger. So in person is that first one. The second one is one I also did. And if you put both of these two together, then you're going to have accelerated results. The second one 
is virtual mentors. Surrounding yourself by virtual people you want to become with. So this isn't like going and watching Among Us videos with the sidemen. This is finding mentors of growth. This is a, if you're going into sales, Grant Cardone or the Wolf of Wall Street. Uh, two different people, not the same. Uh, if you want to go into like the meditation side, then you go into like Jay Shetty. Uh, if you want to go into like self-development, then you jump into like Alex Hermosi or Lewis Howes. If you want to learn more about like the success rules in life, Evan Carmichael. If you want to learn about coaching and mentoring, like if you want to learn about the psychological side, Tony Robbins and, and, and so like, there's a, goodness, there's just so many people out there. So many people out there that you can find who are just sharing their, their secrets, which aren't really secrets. Like so many people think that the rich people are hiding something when in reality, they're sharing more than the poor people. Like they're sharing everything. Well, not everything. They sell their money. Uh, they're sh but they're sharing like their ideas and their wealth and sharing their wisdom and experience that they have. We just got to find them. They're not hiding it. They're, it's out there for to go with it, right? So as I exposed myself to more of my virtual mentors, just like the people I said, it was simply that much easier to then become them. Because I, I, it, you, if you look, look at like the first two or three years when I was doing my self-development thing, I always had an earbud in my ear always was listening to an audiobook or a YouTube video on uh, some of the, you know, top high entrepreneurs. I was listening to them. I was getting their, their, their uh, perspectives and wisdoms and experiences into my mind so that as I get more exposed to them, it's just like being in person to where I'm starting to think about them and start acting like them. Those are two things that have helped me. And can hopefully help you. But in in all, as we wrap it around, as we close, uh, environment is important. Check your environment. Who are you surrounding yourself with? Do you what is your goal, and what kind of people do you need in your life to reach the goal? And as you bring those people in your life, who are those people who are not helping you reach the goal? And you might need to spend a little bit less time with them. And even more importantly, the thoughts that we have in our heads, who do you, who are you thinking you are? Do you think of yourself as courageous, as ambitious, as curious, adventurous, being able to go out there, disciplined and motivated to crush the goals in your life? Or do you see yourself as lazy, as someone who can't do it, as someone who always needs help, needs someone else to come save you? Because when it comes down to it, whether you think that you can or think that you can't, you're right. So go out and start thinking a little bit better and start acting a little bit more precise and finding people who you can surround yourself more with, whether in person or virtual, because doing that is going to help you get to where you need to go so much more than sitting around and waiting for someone to save you. So simply start taking those steps and start moving forward. This has been another awesome episode of Champion Reads. Today, it's just me, but that's okay because we're still giving you the value that we get from these best-selling books by best-selling authors and the wonderful wisdom and experiences that sh they share with us that hopefully can help you. If you found inspiration today, go ahead and subscribe to Champion Reads where we have even more episodes that you can follow, that we go into those best-selling books to hopefully change your life, to change your environment, right? As well as to change the way that you think that you are. You can follow us on social media at any place at my champion circle. You can also send us a message at info at champions, my champion circle.com, as well as go to our website for all the social media links, all the emails that, uh, you need to be able to, to send to us as well as other links to our mastermind round tables, to our trainings and to everything in between. So until then champions, 
Go out and continue to kill it. Go out and think a little bit better. Change the way that you think, as well as find more people that you want who have already done what you want in your life and put them more into your life because your inner circle and your environment is real. So change your inner circle to be able to change the results that you have. Until next time, we'll talk to you later.